We already have the main interface of the application. However, the background we have at the moment is not very eye-catching. Therefore, we're going to assign a gradient to totally change the visual appearance to the application. But before applying this gradient to our application, we must know how we can use them in .NET MAUI. For it, I'm going to proceed to return to the grid that is going to serve as background, that is to say, the first grid in the SAML file, and we must specify a property of the grid, although you can also access to this property in multiple elements, as for example in a control frame. We're going to indicate that we want to modify the background of the grid. In .NET MAUI we have two types of gradients, linear gradients and circular gradients. Let's start by specifying a linear gradient, and for this we have to type linear gradient brush. We have to specify a start point, which we will see later what it is. We're going to specify 0, 0, and also an endpoint that is equal to 0, 0 as well. Within this definition of linear gradient brush, we have to specify a collection of different gradient stops. So we have to specify gradient stop collection, and we're going to specify that we want a gradient stop element with an offset equal to zero and a color equal to dark blue. Let's close that tag. We're going to see later on what this gradient stops thing is all about. I'm going to copy this line. I paste it one more time. I'm going to proceed to stop the application to remove these lines that we're getting and we've already defined a collection of gradient stops. We can test the application to see what this change looks like. And once we start the application, we see a completely blank background. Why is this happening? Well, I'll explain what we're doing in the SAML code. First of all, we're defining what type of gradient we want to use in the application. In this case, we are indicating that we want a linear gradient. I'm doing to do some tests helping me with this tool called CSS gradient with which we can get a visualization of different gradients. In the case of a linear gradient, notice that a color starts at one edge and a color ends at another edge. We have another type of gradient which is a radial gradient, which refers to having a circle in the center from which a color starts, the color extends outward with the final color at the end. The next point that we are specifying as part of this linear gradient brush is to indicate a start point and an end point. What does this refer to? Well, I'm going to represent each of the corners of an application through these kind of coordinates that we see on the screen. And we see that each of the corners is specified by either a value of 1 or a value of 0. We start with the top left corner which is represented by a 0, 0. Then the upper right corner is specified by a value of 1, 0. And so on with each of the corners. So what we're indicating with this syntax that we see on the screen is to start at the point 0, 0 and end there. That is why we do not see a correct preview in the application. If we wanted a gradient starting from the left side to the right side, we would have to specify as endpoint 1, 0. Therefore, it is the value that I'm going to change in the endpoint property. I save the changes and look, as we can already see, a background in the application. To visualize correctly the gradient, we must change the second color for light blue and the offset for a value equal to 1. With this change, we can see this gradient on the screen. If we wanted to have a gradient from top to bottom, we would have to specify the initial value as 0, 0 and the final value as 0, 1. So let's try these values, save the changes and we already have this preview. But we can also create gradients that go diagonally. We can indicate that, for example, we want the starting point to be the upper left corner and the end point to be the value 1, 1. If we save the changes, see how the gradient has a diagonal orientation. This is what the properties start point and end point refer to. By default, the start point is equal to 0, 0. Therefore, we can remove this property from the XAML code and stay only with the end point. Next, we're going to explain what gradient stops are. If we return to the CSS gradient page, 
we see that the gradient previewed at the top is formed by a pair of colors that we are specified through these selectors that we see here. Each one of these selectors specifies a specific color that is the start color and the end color, and these are known as gradient stops. As part of this line that marks the colors of the gradient, we can add more gradient stops as part of the gradient, and as we drag each of the gradient stops, look how the color of the upper part is modified according to the specified colors of each one of them. For example, if we assign a different color to one of the gradient stops, see how the color changes as we drag the location of each of the gradient stops. So, the collection of gradient stops refers to each of the selectors that we can position along the gradient line and to which we can assign a different color. Within the definition of the linear gradient brush, we must specify a collection of gradient stops, which are each of these that we see here. We specify an offset whose value must be between 0 and 1, which represents the percentage from 0 to 100 that we see in the bar. For example, if you wanted a gradient stop that was in the middle, you would specify a value of .5 for the gradient stop. Here, we are indicating that the first gradient stop is at the beginning of the gradient and the last gradient stop is at the end with a different color. This is why we can see this gradient that we see on the screen. If we add an additional green stop in the center of the gradient and we assign a color, for example, dark cyan, we save the changes. Look how the gradient of the application has changed automatically. I'm going to place a color a little more striking to make the example look better. And we can see better the three gradient stops that are forming the gradient. Finally, for the case of radial gradients, we must specify instead of linear gradient brush, a radial gradient brush. And instead of specifying endpoint, specify a property called center, in which we will specify where the gradient will start. For example, if we start it at location 0,0, .0 and visualize the changes, here I made a mistake and put a comma instead of a dot. I'm going to restart the execution of the application. We can already see this gradient, which looks a little strange, but if we modify the property so that the center is at 0.5 and 0.5, we can already see this gradient better. We see how it extends from the center with the initial color to the color on the outside. This is how we can work with gradients, and this is what we're going to apply in our CodeQuotes application.